Hello everyone, today we'll be talking about another variant of the OpenAI Whisper for speech to text and that's called the Distill Whisper model. It's called Distill because it's, it employs a distillation process through which we acquire a smaller and faster set of models. My name is Rami Kushaba and I'll be your presenter for today. So let's start. So Whisper is a 1.5 billion parameters a model. It's a sequence to sequence transformer model um, trained on 680,000 hours of weekly supervised speech recognition data. And it has been demonstrating excellent, um, let's say, performance on different domains and data sets. However, when running Whisper models on low latency and resource constrained environments, there is a challenge actually given the size of these different Whisper models. So, you know, there are variants of these Whisper models ranging from, let's say, tiny to large V3. So it goes tiny, um, small, medium, large, large um, V2, and then large V3. As the model size keeps growing up, like the number of parameters are increasing or is increasing like significantly. And you can't really, let's say, um, host that on some of these constrained environments. So that's a problem. So the still whisper maintains the robustness of the whisper model to different acoustic conditions, but it's actually less prone to hallucination error on long form audio. So it shrinks the size of the model while giving you something less prone to hallucination, which is really good. So knowledge, knowledge distillation is a process where we employ two set of models. One we call the student and one we call the teacher. So student is a copy of the teacher, but the main difference is that in the student model, we remove some of the layers and then we um, train the student model to learn all possible predictions from the teacher. We are not asking the student to learn only the good ones or the correct answers. We are asking it to learn everything, which helps it understand more about like the context. So the, the knowledge distillation process, as I said, it in, involves shrinking the teacher into a smaller student size. And what you are doing over here, you are copying the weights from the maximally spaced layers, okay, and removing the layers in between. So you are ticking off or removing some of the layers and thereby reducing the number of parameters. And then you end up using cross entropy to match the performance with the teacher model, basically. Over here, as you can see, this is the architecture of the original whisper. On the left side, there is the encoder part, which we don't touch, we just copy it as it is. And on the right side, there is the decoder side, which you, you remove some of the um, middle layers over here, as you can see, and you keep the terminal ones or the most uh, distant layers. And then you get the performance over here and try to match it to the model, the same exact model with all the layers, nothing being removed. And you use KL divergence for that. So copy the entire encoder and freeze it, don't touch it. And then copy only two decoder layers, which are these two over here and all other decoder layers from Whisper are discarded basically in between and then you use KL divergence between the distant distilled model and the Whisper model okay and basically the cross entropy loss and pseudo labeled audio data trying to match the performances so the training of the still Whisper model has been done in the paper supporting the GitHub repo. It said the training was done on 22,000 hours of pseudo label audio data spanning 10 domains over 18,000 speakers. So these are the um, details of the different data sets that they have mentioned in their paper. And the question is, like if you're still asking, why do I need this? Because it's provide you like faster inference, so six times faster than the original whisper while maintaining the error rate within 1% word error rate of the original whisper. It's robust to noise. Um, it's robust to hallucinations and designed like for speculative decoding where the still whisper model can be used as an assistant to whisper model, giving two times faster inference speed. And the final and most important thing is that it's licensed and under the MIT license, which means you can use it for commercial purposes. So as in the previous models that we have downloaded and installed in this series, we are copying the requirements of the original whisper because the process is copying original whisper and removing some layers. So you will definitely need FFmpeg, you will need CUDA and you will need PyTorch installed. 
As we mentioned previously, FFmpeg is a complete cross-platform solution to record, convert, and stream audio and video. You employ FFmpeg to downsample the audio signals into 16,000 samples per second or 16,000 hertz. And then you employ NVIDIA CUDA to enable you to run your code in a GPU instead of for CPU. And PyTorch you employ it because it's a machine learning library based on the Torch library. And this is what they coded in, basically. So we are going to head now to the terminal to start installing these different components. And as we did in the previous videos, the installation of CUDA and PyTorch can be done with the one command over here, as you can see. So we'll start now with the installation process. So the first thing we are going to do is to start installing the requirements. And the first one is the FFmpeg. So ffmpeg.org, that's the first one. We head to the website of FFmpeg. We hit the download button over here. We select the Windows platform and then the Windows builds by BTBN just like we did in the previous videos. And then we head down to the biggest um, file size, which is 143 MB, which was created 10 hours ago. We download this. So the download has started. We'll wait for it to finish. So now that the download has completed, we go to the folder. So it's a zip file. We are going to unzip it using 7ZIP over here. And once it's unzipped, we will rename it to FFmpeg only. And the reason is that for this renaming is that to make it simpler to find this specific folder because I need to add it to the Windows environment variables. So rename it, then Control X to cut it and put it somewhere else. Like in my case, I'll put it in the C drive and you can see it's actually here. I already pasted it over here, FFmpeg. You go inside this as a FFmpeg and there's the bin folder. What you need to do is tell Windows where to find this FFmpeg bin folder. So now that we know, like we control, we copy this, so control C, and then you head to right click on the start and you get to system. And of course, in your case, this might look different depending on the version of Microsoft Windows that you have. I'm running on Windows 11, so I uh, select the advanced system options and then the environment variables. I come here to the path uh, variable. I edit the path, create a new, and I paste it here. So I've done this already. You can see it's C slash FFmpeg slash bin. So my operating system knows where to find FFmpeg. In fact, if I close everything and head back to the Anaconda prompt, if I just say FFmpeg from anywhere, it recognizes the FFmpeg and give you some sort of options, but it needs you to give some sort of parameters, like what do you want from the FFmpeg? So now that we know that FFmpeg is installed already, the next step is to look at the other requirements. So now that we have installed FFmpeg, we proceed with an installation of the remaining requirements. So we open the browser and the first one would be the CUDA development kit. So CUDA development kit, in this case, I selected 11.8 because there was nothing mentioned over there on which version um, is required. You can also do, for example, 12.1. Okay. You can install this one, depending like if it's going to work with it or not. You have to see the requirements, but nothing was mentioned. I was, as I said, like in the distilled whisper GitHub, which means it could work with either. So before installing this, actually, like you can download this one, but before installing it and downloading it, so click this on the C drive, program files, and then you go to NVIDIA GPU computing toolbox, you will see that there is already a folder called CUDA, and I have version 12.1 already installed on my laptop. However, if you don't have it, or if you want to install a specific version, all well, what you have to do is come back over here, um, select the operating system, Windows, the architecture, click on it, and then the Windows version, which I'm running on 11, and then you download and install the EXE. And that's what you need to do then follow, like basically you download the file. So you go to the download section over here and you see the CUDA development um, kit version 11.8. It's three gigs worth of data or size. And then you just install it, double click and next, next, next. You don't have to worry about anything over here.
just install it. So that's the installation of the um, CUDA. And then if we head back to the GitHub repo of Distill Whisper, so let's see what else is there required. Okay. And then we look over here, they mentioned nothing about the specific Python version for this installation. So we can proceed straight away with this command, which is the installation of the transformer and accelerate and the data sets. So we start an Anaconda prompt over here. Let's make this full screen. Let's make sure first we don't have this um, environment created previously. So we have the previous environments for the faster Whisper, Whisper S2T and Whisper X. Now we're going to say conda create dash n. Let's call it distill. Python version they didn't mention, so I'm going to put 3.10. Put dash y to accept the yes and no question. Let this install and we will take it forward from here. It finished installation. And as in the previous videos, notice over here that you are still in the base environment. So you have to um, copy this command, conda activate distill. So you can activate the virtual environment that we have just created, which is the distill. And once you are in here, you bring that command we just copied, this one. So you copy it, you bring it over here, and you paste it, control V. And then you run this command to install everything. However, if you notice that um, while um, looking at the previous requirements, we didn't yet install Torch. And I'll tell you in a second while why I didn't do that yet. So now that we finished the installation, if we look over here in the list of the toolboxes that have been installed already, one of them should be Torch. So continue looking over here, Torch. As you can see, Torch 2.4.1, it has been installed already with the installation of the transforms. So now that we know that Torch is there, CUDA development is installed, FFmpeg is installed, and we've installed the transformer library, what else do we need? Um, nothing basically, so we can go ahead and look at um, Anaconda Navigator. And from here we can activate the environment that we just created. So. You know how here in the command line you said conda activate distill in the graphical user interface to replace that command the conda activate distill all what you need to do is to click on the drop down list and pick distill once you are in distill i'm going to install spider because we need an ide to make things easier so install spider for us so now Spider has been installed, launch it, and we are now in Spider. So to start coding, what you are going to do is head back to the Distill Whisper repo, as you can see here. There, there's an example that they put over there. I'm going to copy it, bring it back here. So this is the example, okay, or at least the first part of the example. Because if you see what they are doing over here, they import Torch, import Transformer, set up some um, model kind of prerequisites or parameters and then they put the pipeline so i still need to copy this part as well okay let's put them all over here and then organize the code after and then come back here the remaining part is to load the audio so i have my own audio i'm not going to load anything from this command i just need this one okay so first of all, let's have a look at the code. Um, import Torch, import Transformer, that's all good. Device will be CUDA if Torch.CUDA is available. So this is really a good checkpoint over here because we want to see if we what, like if what we have installed does actually enable the use of um, GPU or not. And then you select the Torch type, which is either float 16 or 32, that's fine. The model ID, they selected the distill large, which is three, like few gigs worth of data. So I'm not going to do that. It's going to take us a time to download. So I can say small dot English. So I'm bringing the distilled version of the small model. And then um, auto model for speech sequence to sequence from pre-trained. That's fine. Model to device to make sure it's going to run on the GPU, the device that we have selected. Okay, and then the remaining um, things, and over here it's complaining because we didn't say what sample is, which should be our audio file. So in our case, sample could be what? 
um, the location of the audio file, which is C slash temp in my case, and then rocket versus mini rocket MP3. So this is one of my own audio files. So that I've downloaded from YouTube. There's a video on the um, basically explaining rocket versus mini rocket models. So I downloaded that and converted to MP3 and then run it in this pipeline to see um, the result. Before that, let me just import time so we can, oops, what's going on? So time, okay. And over here, let's say start equals time dot time because I want to calculate the time taken for the transcription part and end equals time dot time. And that print, I don't need to print the result. I need to print an F statement, okay, which says on a new line, time for subscription equals um, and uh, minus start. Okay, that should be all. So if we have everything installed properly, this code should run now. So first of all, I'm going to save it as in my temp folder. Okay, so I'm going to say call whisper distill. I've done something previously. I'll just overwrite it. So call whisper distill. Yes, overwrite the old one. Don't need the old one. And now let's test. Let's see if it's going to run or fail for some reason. So obviously over here it has failed and it says you have passed more than 3000 mil input feature bigger than 30 seconds. So the, um, let's say the default architecture over here uh, presumes that you will only pass an audio file which is less than 30 seconds. If you want to pass longer than that, you need to say return timestamp equal true. So for this one to understand what you're trying to do, put that command over here, close the kernel, come back over here, run the code again hopefully this time to run without errors so now it's running but it's taken some time so let's observe the gpu utilization actually there is no much gpu utilization let's look at the cpu aha uh -huh. cpu is being utilized heavily and you can see it's actually almost fully utilized for this specific process while we told it we need to be running on CUDA on GPU, so why didn't why did it end up not selecting CUDA zero and end up working on CPU? Is that the case? Let's verify. Once the variables are here, because I can't see them yet until this one finishes running, but it's good at least we put a timer to see how much time it takes on the CPU. Okay, you can clearly see it's running on a CPU. Something is happening on the GPU as well. But when I check the dedicated memory usage, it's not there really. It's not utilizing it for this purpose. It's doing something on the video encode and 3D. But yeah, beside that is basically CPU usage. So once this will finish running, we can verify this. So I paused the recording for a while, but it's still actually running. It's taken a long time. But you can see over here that the GPU is not really being utilized. That's that much. Look at the CPU. It's going heavily on the CPU. So let's wait and see what will happen. Interesting. 322 seconds. Forget about what I written over here. But yeah, 322 seconds. That's way too much. Now, let's observe what was the result of this device. And if you look over here, it says device was a CPU. So why is that? Now, if you remember from the requirements, we said we needed FFmpeg, NVIDIA CUDA, and PyTorch. We, we said that you can install the development kit yourself and just follow the instructions next, 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 because I had a version already installed on my laptop. And then we said Torch was already included in the transformer installation. So why didn't it install, why didn't it link PyTorch to the NVIDIA CUDA? And the answer is right over here. Because the version of the PyTorch installed was not installed with like um, CUDA enabled basically. Because we just look at it and the command went down, we saw it over here installed. But basically we didn't actually install it through this proper way. 
Now, because I have um, CUDA Development Kit version 12.1 on my laptop, so what I need to do is go to PyTorch, go to the previous versions of PyTorch, okay? Over here, let's look for 12.1, and there you go. This is for Linux and Windows. So I need this version, CUDA 12.1. So I'm going to take this command, okay? Copy it, come back over here, drop it over here, Control V. Okay, it says content installed PyTorch, Torch Vision, Torch Audio. However, you're saying Torch CUDA equals 12.1. Now install it. Let it install. So just say yes over here. Now this has been installed. All what we need to do, go back here to Spider, close this. Okay, load the first few of them. I don't want to run everything again yet. So let, let these be ready. And then we're going to bring this one command now to show you the result of it. So once this is ready, which should happen any second, it did. Now paste the command, run it. Look over here. Now it says your device is CUDA because you have properly installed CUDA and PyTorch and linked them together. So if I just go here basically to paint, let me just do something quickly. What we are saying is that you have from one side, which is the PyTorch, and from one side you have the CUDA development kit, div kit. This one is an exe, exe that you need to install yourself, okay? And PyTorch is something that's sometimes installed by the other libraries, as we saw, like Transformer did install PyTorch for us. However, you have to make sure that the CUDA and the PyTorch are linked together, okay? They have to be linked together. And the way for you to install PyTorch and tell it that there is a CUDA already existing on my machine is to come back to the PyTorch and select the CUDA version that you have installed, okay? And tell it to install PyTorch with PyTorch CUDA equal this version. Another way you can do it is through the wheel. So you can say pip install torch, torch vision, torch audio, and you specify the version of the CUDA. Like in my case, it will be 12.1 instead of 11.8. That's how you get them both seeing or talking to each other. Now, if I close this, Previously, like with when we had a CPU instead of GPU, it took us 300 seconds. Now, if I run this, it should be way less than that. There you go, 58 seconds. Way better than 300 something seconds. So, by making sure that you have CUDA device enabled, you can see it over here. And then you run it on the GPU. We drop down the transcription time from 300 seconds to 58 seconds. Now, what else can we do after this? Close the PyTorch website, get back to the GitHub repo of Distill Whisper, and look at what else is there. So over here, they describe more features of their toolbox. They say the sequential long form and the chunked long form is another thing that, um, sorry, chunk form, you can also look at it, the translation. So for example, if you look over here, it says um, to enable chunk, past the chunk length in seconds because the original whisper it actually transcribed chunks or pieces of the audio file every 30 seconds now over here you can actually pass a parameter which says the chunk length is in seconds it's 25 seconds and the batch size is 16 and in previous videos like we actually talked about the importance of the batch size as you are actually passing chunks of the same audio file to process so you can put these two commands over here, save the code, okay, and then rerun it again. So remember, 300 seconds on CPU, 58 seconds on a GPU without chunk. And now let's run it again with the chunk. Let's see how much time will it take us this time. Observe over here, from 58, we drop down to 22 seconds. This is really amazing. The speeds are getting much better now. So he started with 300 seconds. Then you drop to 58 seconds with the GPU, and then you put some option, you play with the option, and you drop it down to 22 seconds. Now let's have a look at the result. What's in the result? 
result is again a basically what a dictionary so you have a list and a string inside the list you will have a bunch of dictionaries each dictionary will have key and items or values so you can see that the timestamp is where it starts where it finish so it started this specific chunk started at zero second up until the seven second and this is what has been said in the first seven seconds hello everyone today we'll be talking about this is me basically talking over there so you can compare the audio yourself download it so it's pretty much accurate exactly what I said and then you go from seven seconds to 13 seconds what has been said 13 25 22.55 and so on continue or you can have the whole piece of text over there as well okay if you don't want it, the chunks only so now we got this up and running what you do with it is up to you I just want to show you how to get it up and running with CUDA support if you do want to do one more comparison a small one basically what we can do is to compare to um, whisper X because we have them both in my machine so a very quick test of uh, what I'm gonna do is anaconda prompt anaconda prompt will say conda in list okay and then we have whisper X so we can say conda activate whisper X then go to the folder where everything is stored like my own Python code and then from here we can say python dash m call it's using a batch size of five no make it 16 if possible okay compute size is float 16 which is the same thing that i have over here which is the float 16 by the way so um and we are using the same model the still small dot english that's what we are calling and over here is the still small dot english Okay, so yeah, that should be it. Let's see. Close this kernel and have a look at the Whisper X and see how much time it will take to run on the same audio file on GPU using the same batch size. So, Whisper X took us around 17.6 seconds, as you can see over there. 17.6, and yeah, it's beautiful. So, yeah, I hope you learned something new today and you can play with more with the parameters of the transformers. And yeah, enjoy. Hope you learned something new today.